Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you a painting of some sheep and a lamb. Now I encountered these sheep up on Dartmoor and today I, I felt like just being really expressive with a fairly big brush. So this is uh, A2 mixed media paper so it's very roughly 20 inches by about 15 and the brush I'm using today is a synthetic flat it's about one inch wide I'm going to use conventional acrylic so I've got titanium white fluorescent orange ultramarine blue and fluorescent yellow so it's a little bit of an unusual uh, color combo because normally I'd have a red here I may add some other colors later we'll see how we go so first thing I'm going to do is uh, grab some of the blue and uh, we'll see how we get on with the initial drawing using the brush. So begin with the top of the lamb's head. Now I don't need to do a sort of complete drawing, I just need to put the big shapes in place. I've got the paint a little bit runnier than I would like for my for my drawing, but um, you know we'll, we'll make we'll make do with what we've got. So even though the brush is fairly chunky in size. I use the edge or the tips rather or the corner of the brush I can still get a reasonably precise line and because this is conventional acrylic it's going to be you know obviously I can cover up these lines but it's, it's difficult to remove them if, if not impossible um, so by using broken lines it just gives me a little bit more room to maneuver uh, later on if needed. So a couple of ears have gone in, the, perhaps the head could do with being up a little bit higher, but not too bad. So if the change the angle of the right side of the head there. Is the chest where the other leg or the right hand front leg disappears into the torso got a bit of a got quite a nice shadow being cast by the head and all of this is pretty dark as well so although I was going to start with line work we may as well just block in some of these deeper toned areas. The beginnings of the back and the rear end. So when it comes to curves, you can think of a curve if you want as just being a series of straight lines um, rather than try and create a sweeping line with a chunky brush. And just say well I'll approximate it for now put down some straight lines now that line I put in here for where the top of the the leg disappears into the torso is a bit too far to the left I now realize so we'll put uh, a corrected version in beginnings at the top of the other leg okay. 
So we've got our two front legs there. A rear leg, which I perhaps made a little bit too wide up at the top. And then we can put in some more darker areas. Still just sticking with the, the ultramarine blue. And that shadow actually comes all the way down there, the shadow from the ear. Um, so that's kind of cool. Very dark there, and then we'll put in some cast shadow. And by dragging the brush upwards, that gives me a bit of a frayed edge to the top edge of, of the mark I'm making. So it's a nice nice way to begin to suggest some some grass okay so we've got the beginnings of our first animal and just taking a moment to look at the proportions and i don't think that's too bad at the moment so let's uh, put one of the adults in So again, just putting in a very approximate shape of the silhouette of the head. There's the top of the head. We need some ears. And we've got a bit of white wool coming out over the top of the head. Line of the back goes along there somewhere. leg of, of this sheep comes I think I might have made my sheep a bit bigger and it actually isn't a reference so we'll go with what I've created rather than oh no it's not too, it's not too bad it's not too far out I don't think um, and then got another leg there and again I can put in Bit of cast shadow. And again, the legs are very dark on this animal. It's quite a bit of shadow under the chest and the underside of the belly, as we would expect. And again, the head is pretty dark. So now we've got the beginnings of two animals in place.
So the next question is, having put those two animals in place, do I want to add any more to the composition? At the moment, I feel I, I really don't want to. I think this will work best um, against a fairly simple background. So I'm grabbing, I'm making rather a mess of it, grabbing a big lump of titanium white. Still got a bit of the ultramarine blue on my brush, but I notice I've added some cerulean blue to my palette. So let's uh, let's grab some of that. And let's begin to introduce a sky. And as I'm applying the paint, you can see that I've put down one area fairly thick. There are still a few hints of the ultramarine, ultramarine showing. Uh, and I'm also getting some dry brush effects. And I'm, I'm now thinking, as I'm doing this, well, actually, I quite like that. It gives a sort of hazy effect. So we'll um, not worry too much about making this a, a rock solid blue background. And I'm going to put the horizon line in fairly low, I think, as well, sort of just above this cast shadow. So I think that will, I don't know, I think that'll just work well with the way the animals are standing on the page, you know, in terms of their position on within the picture. So I guess that doesn't have to be exactly level, but there we go. So next up, taking a fairly sort of simplified, dramatic, if you like, approach to the background. So I think I'm now going to pick up some of my fluorescent yellow and not worry too much about making sure that's pure yellow. If some of the blue on the brush mixes in, then that'll give me some nice greens. And then as I go over the cast shadow, what I'm hoping is that'll create some greens as well. And that's working quite nicely. I'm deliberately not going to cover all of the blue I've put down because I think the, the variation in colour. So I've got green here where I've gone over the blue with the fluorescent yellow. But then where I leave the blue uh, uncoated, then obviously it's still, it's still blue. So I think that's quite a nice uh, bit of natural variation to have going on. We use a similar technique on the cast shadows under the lamp. OK, so we've got the beginnings of an environment now for our two animals. OK, so having created our sky and our field, I've now still got um, mostly yellow on the brush. There's still a bit of blue in there, but let's grab some of the fluorescent orange and see what we get when we add a bit of that to the mixture. We'll grab a little bit of the cerulean blue as well. And that's created a green, which was not my intention. So we'll come back in with the orange. There we go. That's created kind of an interesting 
ochre, orangey, coppery brown. Um, so let's see if we can add some of that to, to these sheep and make it work. So for example, on under the chest there and there, there as well. Under the chest and along the left hand side of the head, further down the chest. And although it's not this colour, it's fairly dark tone there, so I'm putting some of that in. As we come up the belly, or up, up the side of the animal, put some there. Perhaps a little bit there on the back of the lamb. Could even come a bit further left. I think that's all I want to do with that one. Now, if I grab the another, you know, big lump of the orange. I haven't washed my brush out, but I'm going to mix that in with some of the ultramarine blue to get a hopefully a bit of a different brown. Let's go a little bit bluer. Sorry, I was mixing that off camera, but um, let's see what that, I'm trying to think where to put this to test it. Let's, uh, well, that's not too bad. That's a fairly dark colour. OK, so I'm going to put some of that on the legs. I'm going to use it fairly sparingly, though, I think, as my probably my deepest shadow colour. And if I use that this as the, the shadow colour on the inside of the ears. The whole right side of the, the head is in quite deep shadow. And the same with the lamb. Right side of the head, right side of the neck. A little bit of shadow on the left side of the head. Inside of the ear can be darker. On the left ear as well. And then I'm trying to preserve some of the original painting that I've done. So that's why I'm not taking the shadow all the way down the legs. So I'm trying to balance my observations and, you know, going for something which is reasonably representative with the kind of expressive statement that I've made with my original mark making. So All right, well, I've washed my uh, brush out reasonably well. I'm picking up uh, some of that clean titanium white and mixing that into the first of the coppery browns that I've created. And, um, you know, I'm happy to have some brilliant white on the fleeces of the sheep. And in fact, probably most of it will stay that way. But I just want to, you know, put in a bit of a light tone in places again just using the sort of dry brush technique to suggest some texture on the on the on the wool without sort of going through the laborious process of trying to describe every little bit maybe perhaps put a little bit of that up there as well just to connect the top of the head to uh, the, the bit of wool which is sticking out over the top 
and then you know to stay consistent across the painting we'll do something similar on the lamb now the shadow on the lamb um, it's actually got quite a bit of purple in it and there's some nice purples and blues in the shadows but I think I'm going to struggle to create those purples with the colour scheme I've got I could add some red red to my palette I guess but um, I'm quite content I think at the moment to keep the colour scheme very very simple so in terms of you know big brush painting because I've used this single brush for the entire painting so far that's as far as I'm going to go and then I think I just need to add a few details to the heads possibly with watercolour marker but I'm going to let that dry now completely and then I'll be back in a, I'll be back in a bit so um, I'm switching to a small round brush now and just coming in with pure ultramarine blue and um, there are just a few areas I want to tidy up the line work on uh, without getting too fussy so just, I just felt the need to describe that ear a little bit better than I had just so that it didn't get too lost in the sky but then the, the next main thing I want to do is um, uh, put in an eye on the adult sheep the beginnings of an eye I don't know how well that's coming across on camera just yet. Uh, in fact, let me, what I'll do, let me get the camera a little bit closer for you. So still sticking with the pure blue. Let's put another eye in on the right. Now I can't really see where this eye is in the, um, uh, in the photo, but you know, I can estimate where it is. And we need some indication of nostrils. And then sheep have this uh, front lip, which is split. And then we'll do something similar for the lamb. So just slight indications of where the eyes are. nostrils and a split lip and I think actually I'm just going to smear that one off because uh, I've put the nostrils in the wrong spot there really so let's try that again I think what I need to do is indicate because the angle this lambs is holding his head, I think the nostrils need to come up a little bit higher. I think I've placed them higher now. I'm not sure that's quite right, but um, I think it'll be okay. A bit of put a bit of shadow under the chin there. And then now I've got some of the fluorescent yellow with a little bit of white in the mixture as well. And we'll just use that to put a little bit of light into the eyes. Now, in adding the little bit of line work, I'm fairly happy with the lines themselves, the details on the face. 
but it's kind of taken away from the style of painting I've been using so far. So what I'm going to do is um, go back to the cerulean blue mixed with white, but add rather more of the cerulean blue and go back to my big brush and then use those lines as a bit of a guide uh, to put in a few highlights in places. You know, and when I say highlights, I mean subdued highlights. So. I'm not sure I'm happy with that bit on the ear, so I'll try and lift off most of that. That's, that's just about okay, but I quite like the bit on the nose. Um, a little bit over the, over the brows, a touch on the top of the ear there. And then a little bit on, on the underside of that nostril. A little bit on the bridge of the nose. And I think that's starting to sort of solidify the look. It was a bit too, putting the line work on made things look a little too flat, I feel. So I'm going to grab a bit of the uh, ultramarine blue and mix that in with the colour I'm using currently just to give me a more subdued highlight. That's worked reasonably well. So we'll come in and add some of that. On the lamp going back to the slightly lighter version. And I can actually use this colour, I've now realised, to enhance the cast shadows a little bit. And Let's put a little bit under there as well. 